Steve, hey, this is a wonderful world of woodworking for Carbotech. Those that know me, I'm not the tidiest person around the workshop by any means, but I have found it is most advantageous to be at least a bit organised when you're doing these pours. Now, previously on the, another stream, I said I was mixing by volume. And that worked quite well. And then I discovered on the Carbotech website, actually, with resins, that there's a formula that you can do so you can actually do it by weight. And for me, I must admit, I think it's easier than by volume because I can be far more accurate with what I need. The formula is times whatever weight you have initially by 0.43. And that will give you the amount of hardener that you need. It's important you use a clean cup. I've got a pair of digital scales that you can zero. And the resin I'm using is perfect cast, rigid casting. First things, we'll do the um, resin, plonk that on the scales zero it and I know I'm going to need or about that much resin so I'm going to guesstimate two-thirds and we'll see what weight it is okay it's 137 136 grams so to find out how much hardener I need, I'll go 136 times 0.43. That gives me 58.48. So 58.48. So I tear weight that, bring it back to zero. And then with the hardener, I just pour in until I get 58 grams in there, 58 or 59 grams. Pour it in slowly. Two things, one, you don't get bubbles. And secondly, you can be more accurate. Okay, well, I'm just a couple of grams over on that. But it's close enough. I'll put this out of the way. Now to stir it, I've made up these little stirrers that fit into my drill. This is the stage I'm actually going to go and put gloves on. Whoops! Just got these disposable gloves from the hardware shop. Um, when you get them, make sure you get a size that fits. I've got big hands, so I, I've got XL, and uh, I was finding the L's kept on breaking, which wasn't very nice at all. All right. Now, don't have it flat out like that, obviously. Hold, hold the cup. It says four minutes on the directions, but I think if that's by hand, I've been doing this for two minutes for quite a while and have not had a drama. Don't have it too fast, because if you have it too fast, you can create bubbles. Which again, if you've got a pressure pot, it doesn't seem to be as big an issue than if you don't. The thing I've noticed when I've made these stirrers, you have to make them long enough that you don't get resin that goes up the shaft. Because previously I've done that, and the resin stuck to the drill chuck and I couldn't get it out. Okay, that'll do it. And 
bubbles will come to the surface of this, which if you're going to um, use the pressure pot isn't a, a big deal. The pressure pot doesn't get rid of bubbles. What it actually does is compresses the bubbles so you don't see them. And that's why you should leave it in there for at least four or five hours. I did one the other day and I thought, oh, I should be right. After a couple of hours and I took it out and it looked great and within about 30 seconds, all these bubbles started to appear. And then when I put it back in, it had gone past that point in curing where they could be compressed. So you see, being impatient gives you lots of lessons to learn. And this is a pressure pot I use. And it's a 50 PSI. This was pressurized last night. It's a standard cheap um, paint pressure pot. You do have to do some modifications to it before you can use it. One of the things that I've done is I have an extra connector there that's blanked off. So when I disconnect the main feed, it uh, seals it. And also having a good locking mechanism at the back is good. You can get these. This is a, um, the one I had originally. It's a small one and I found this a little ball cock and I found it leaked. Whereas going to this larger arrangement, it wasn't that much dearer. It's fine. So take the pressure out. And once the pressure's gone, undo the lid. Remove the top. And there I have two that were done the other day. So, what to do with these? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Now we're just going to pour this in. This has got some bubbles. It's starting to heat up a bit. So, so I'm just going to wave a heat gun over it. And the bubbles just disappear. Gone. See that? And gently pour this over what we're doing and the slower you pour it the less chance you're going to have of getting bubbles and yeah, it's looking pretty clear you can see a bubble coming up there so we'll just hit that with the heat gun and I just spilt it on my hand that's why you wear gloves all right let's go and put this into the pressure pot what I've done to mine is I've got a flat um, ice cream container on the bottom of a bucket, which I've slipped in there, which then allows me to pull it out and clean it if I have to. And it's also got a flat bottom, whereas if you look in there, it's got a rounded bottom. And sometimes it's hard to have things to sit flat. Gently put it in. Make sure when you put your top on that your rubber seal is sealed all the way around and it hasn't come away from the edge. If it does, that's when it'll lose pressure. Pop it on there. Tighten up the clamps. I do them opposite each other and in turn so I don't just flatten one down hard I'll do these two a little bit then these two and then back to these two so they they're even airline I'll have the stop cock off put the airline on then open up the drain cock. Not hard, slowly, because all that air is going to rush in and it can knock your job over if you 
let it go in too hard. I'll bring that up to between 40 and 50 PSI. See what it wants to do. That's going to be close enough. That's 48. For the purpose of filming, that will do. So now, I shut it off, remove the air, put my blower back on, and that blanked off one, I just put over there as a protection. Now, I'll leave that for, oh, I don't know, maybe till six o'clock tonight or maybe till, till tomorrow, it doesn't matter. We're all finished. I'll take these gloves off. Your hands feel as if the resin's on there because it's all horrible and slimy and yuck. But when you take the gloves off, they have been totally protected. The next thing to do is cut this one out of the mold.